Hey everybody, welcome to another Mailbag Monday, where uh, Angel and I take some time with Mike here and we answer questions. We're glad to have you, Mike. Thank you. He is now a permanent part of the family. Yes, he is. Permanent? We've adopted him. He's part of it. We've tried to get rid of him, but he just keeps coming <laughs> back. Bad rash. <laughs> really bad. No, we love Mike. All right, Joe. Well, hey, listen, if you get a chance, don't forget to subscribe on our YouTube channel. Yes. Or like and share with the, if you are seeing us on Facebook. And if you would share it with your friends, that would be wonderful. Instagram yeah. also. Definitely share it with your friends because that actually, because they share it with their friends and it just goes yeah, remember viral. That, remember that commercial on TV? You, I tell two friends and you tell yeah, two, two friends, friends and, and they'll tell two, two friends. friends. <laughs> yeah. So if you do it that. is how it works though. Seriously. It is how it works. Yeah. yeah. Okay, guys, thanks for joining us this Monday, and let's just jump in. Joe, what is the difference between God testing and tempting? Since he already knows what we're going to do in a given situation, what does testing us accomplish? Well, we don't know. Uh, it's no different me giving my, my kids going to school and they give them a test. What are they trying to do, flunk them? No, they're trying to find out how much they've learned. Uh, you graduate from school, you should learn certain things, you know. Uh, when I grew up in East Tennessee, you had to grow, graduate with a C average. If you don't have a C average, you didn't graduate. you got to go back and take that class again. What does, it, what does it mean? Well, somebody in the state determined you need to know these certain subjects, algebra, a few English things, uh, some trig, whatever. You need to know this to function in society. So the state's funded this school. It's a state-funded school. We want to make sure that you're getting your money's worth. So they set up a standard. You graduate from this school, we guarantee you know these things. Now, some kids may know a lot more, but you got to at least know this minimum. And so God's never tempts. He can't be tempted, nor does he tempt somebody else. But he does test, you know, uh, going to the promised land. Bitter water, no water, no food. He's trying to get them to use their faith. God's not trying to mess with them. God's trying to get them to use their faith. Without faith, you don't please God. Uh, without faith, you cannot whip the devil. Faith is critical for our life. And the, we said it before, there's great faith, little faith, weak faith, no faith. Faith's a muscle. It's moving all the time. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. And so God will test us. He's trying to get us to use our faith. Are you believing God or are you just coasting? Because if you're coasting, there's a devil who runs hell right now who's looking to take you out. Hell is attacking everybody. Hell attacks an old grandmother, a newborn baby. Hell doesn't care who he attacks. Hell's after everybody. And so John 10.10. 10, uh, the thief kills, steals, destroys. What's hell doing? Stealing, killing, and destroying. What's my job? I'm to resist the devil in the faith. Well, if I don't have any faith, I can't resist the devil. And I'm probably going to be taken out early. So I'm trying to use my faith every day. Well, so I was raised in a church that definitely taught, said that the Lord tempted you as well. No, he can't. It's impossible. He, he cannot be tempted, neither does he tempt. It's impossible. But he tests us. Yes. To get a barometer on where we are and to try to... God knows how much faith you've got. But he wants us to... You don't know. God's trying to reveal you where your faith is. <laughs> I'm telling you, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know so, nothing. So, like, okay, let's just be... Let's just go back to basic Christianity 101 for just a minute. I love that. So, so the children of Israel are wandering in the wilderness. Yes. They've watched God perform miracles yes. already. Yes. He's done the plagues. Yes. And he's parted the Red Sea. Drowned the whole Egyptian army. Yes. So he's basically slayed their enemies. Yeah. And now he... Free water, free food, free heat, free cold. It's all and, free. And that yet they continue to grumble and, mu and, and mumble complain. and complain. Yes. And, and, you know, it has to be frustrating to God to say, hey, what, what do I have to show you? Yeah. You well, know, at this point, for you to continue to believe. Well, the Bible says God's very patient, but he's not forever. And nobody understands that. Well, God's patient, yeah, but he's not forever. You know, we go back to Proverbs 1. You know, we go back to, you know, the different levels. God, uh, God's trying to get us to use our faith. And so uh, whatever's coming up, he says, well, has God messed with me? No, he's trying to get you to use your faith. You need to resist the devil. Well, did God let this happen? He didn't stop it. You're supposed to stop it. You're supposed to resist the devil, lay hands on the sick, cast out devils. That's our job as a church. And so it takes faith to do that every day. So, again, you've got great faith, little faith, weak faith, no faith. I need to have great faith. Well, how do you get great faith? I, I played athletics. We all played athletics in school. You had to go to the weight room. What are you doing in the weight room? I'm killing my muscles. 
and you come out of that weight room, you say, man, I'm sore. Why? Because lifting those weights tore your arm muscles up. You know, your thigh muscles up. Why? I'm sore. Why? You tore your muscles up. So you couldn't lift every day. You had to lift every other day. Give an extra 24 hours for those muscles to build back up. How did you get great muscles? I killed the ones off that I had. You see big bodybuilders you know, on TV and your performance, whatever, whatever. But how'd they get those muscles? They killed the ones they had, and they got bigger ones. And then they killed those, and they got bigger. We used to love to watch Arnold Schwarzenegger. How'd he get that way? He killed the muscles that he had. Well, I think about my journey of faith. You know, I mean, I started living by faith when I was 19 years old. And I can remember, I would say, I'm just believing God, believing God, you know, and it took all yeah, I had to believe God. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. For, I remember Marilyn Hickey said one time years ago, she said, it's harder to believe God for $100 than it is 100000 Now, today I understand what she means yeah. by that, because that muscle, by the time you, you get, uh, if you can get to $100 and you go, oh, well, I can believe God for 500 and then you grow from there. Right. And so by the time you get hit 100000 your faith has grown to that level. Right. But I can remember saying, I will never doubt God again. Yeah, we all said it. <laughs> and how many times did I say that? And then I would forget that he did it already. Yeah. Six months later, I'm in another bind because of my stupidity. Yeah. And then uh, I'd be like, you know, having to fight my watching what I'm saying for sure. And, you know, Job's comforters would surround me. <laughs> yeah. and, and so, you know what I mean? It was just, it was a, it was especially in the early days. And I mean, it never changes. It no, never changes. No. But it's just like, especially when you're learning about it, it's like, you know, you're just like, I mean, I'd have like scripture everywhere yep. and everything. And now I'm like, it, God would answer it. And he's just, ah, he came through. Of course he yes, did. Yes, he did. And then I'll I, never doubt I, him I won't doubt him again. I'm going to tell everybody this yeah. thing. And three weeks later, my electricity is about to be shut off. Yeah. And, and all that, you know, you just forget all of that. So, well, you got all the stories in the Bible. And I always, David's a classic. David's a shepherd boy. He killed a lion that was trying to kill a sheep. Then he had to kill a bear. They say he's got to kill a giant. Then he's in charge of the army for Israel. It's like every time he whipped something, the next time he had to whip something bigger. And then once I whipped that, we're going to do it. Next time you got to whip something bigger. And I'm sure he said that he killed that lion. Lord, I hope I don't have to kill a lion again. So that's the last one, son. Next week's going to be a bear. And after he killed the bear, I thought, man, I hope I don't have to kill another bear. Don't worry, last bear. Now you're going to face this 10 foot, 2 inch giant with six fingers, six toes. God took him to a higher level every time. <laughs> faith to faith and glory to glory. And that's what's happened with all of us as Christians on this planet. What are you getting to believe God for? Well, I'm trying to make enough money to pay my bills. I, th I think it's important also to remember that when you take a test, the teachers find out what you know, which God already knows, but also shows you what you know and what you don't. There you go. And so, like, when you're in a test and you went through something, then you're going to find out, well, this is where I'm at. Yep. Uh, you know what you need to work on, um, but we uh, when you once you pass that test, you got you know you go to the next test, you hey, go to the next, the next test. <laughs> but that's what patience is about and faith is about. And so, I don't think God God doesn't tempt people with evil, but He does test us. Yes, and a lot of times just to show us what we have to because do because He loves yeah, us. Yeah, I love you yeah. so much. I'm trying to get to show how It'll, to use your faith. Yeah, and it allows Him to show off, and it allows you to have a. That's the whole thing with faith is like once you've accomplished this, the next thing is easier, just yeah. like what you were saying. But as you go through that test, God proves Himself. You go on to the next test. If you weren't ever tested, your muscles would never grow. Nope. You know, it's like exactly what you were saying. You if you weren't ever tested, room. you got to you got to go through the test. You know, so. And you know, I remember uh, when I was in school, I went to. 12 different schools and I hated it and you I moved around a lot I hated it <laughs> and so but I, rem I remember I was never that good of a student oh, and either. but people thought I was I don't know why I think that I looked like you know Sandra D or something they thought oh yeah and so they'd always push me in the accelerated program and I would just be terrible and then so I got really insecure about it because I had teachers telling me that and so I've started to believe the lies and then when I started a new career at age 40 and I went into insurance and I had to take a lot of tests I realized wait a minute I'm not that bad at taking a test yeah. you know and so really I've been selling myself short all these years and so many times it's God just saying you know it's not this hard quit believing the lies of the people around yeah. you yeah. quit believing the lies of the enemy trust me just let me be the final authority you're and, looking for. And hell for. has cheerleaders. They'll show up in oh, droves. Yeah. Yep. That is the truth. And a lot of times they will be in your church. Yep. Yes. They'll be in your family. Or your family. Prayer. Yeah, let me, yeah. Definitely or let's your pray for you. Yeah. And then it's just a gossip chain. Yeah. And so you got to be careful. You know, I used to tell my kids all the time, if you don't mind, I'm going to say this. I used to say, 
look, there's, there's yard dogs and there's house dogs in your life. A house dog is one that you cuddle when you get home from work and you jump up and sit in your lap and you tell them your sad stories and they're just always happy to see you. But a yard dog is one that you pet and you occasionally throw a bone out to yeah. on your way out. And I would say to my kids when they'd come home, uh, they'd say, Mom, so-and-so did such-and-such at school. And I'd say, yard dog or house dog? Because there's only a few house dogs in your life. Most people are yard dogs. And I'd say, categorize them. Choose your friends wisely. And that's the same thing when you're surrounding yourself with people that will build you up in faith that's or true. not. Yeah. Which actually segues great to the question in blue if you... Well, let's go ahead and do that one. I, is it that one? No, it's the one right above that. Okay, well, uh, Mike, you can go ahead and ask us. My kids and I want a pet, but my husband's against it. Joe, I know you just love dogs, especially the inside dogs. <laughs> How do I get him to see our side of things? <laughs> <laughs> Pray that God takes blindness from his mind, like knives understanding, because all men eventually lose. You know, because if you win, you've lost. You say you're not getting a dog. Nobody's getting a dog. They're going to hate you till Jesus comes to get you. Yeah. Every family reunion, every Christmas, every holiday, every birthday, you are the north end of a southbound mule. Everybody got a dog except us. Everybody got a pet except us. We're the only ones that know how. One. I said, get one. Get one, and they'll play with it for about half a day, and then it's your dog. Yeah. And then you'll have to that, feed it yeah, and yeah, that is pick the, the fleas and the ticks and That's take true. it to the vet and, you know, when they get bury sick. it eventually one day. Oh, when they get sick. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> somebody, said, somebody said the best alarm clock would be the noise of your dog getting sick in the morning. You'd spring uh, out of bed. Oh, <laughs> jeez. Listen, I had a hard time training my children to go to the potty. Uh, I'm the I, worst I, I, at training dogs. The dogs always we had would look at me and raise a leg and go, mm-hmm, I know it's your carpet. Yep. So, you know, yeah. I was just never that good at it. I know, I know, I know. Do this. Tell your husband they want a cat. Oh. Yep. And there then when he says no, say, well, we'll settle for a dog, and then he'll go for it. Okay, yeah, we'll do say, that. All yeah. right. Or <laughs> rabbits. You ever have rabbits? Yeah, I have. No, I, yeah, yeah. We had a duck once, too. And, yeah, I know. Don't go. I, don't make me go there. I'm scarring <laughs> the mess the unbelievable ma- anyway but uh yeah we had a pet rabbit that, that got, owned got, the upstairs he wasn't in a cage he just ran loose he would he'd you gotta put, be kidding no me. we had a little litter box he'd poop in uh-uh. little pet, but then he ran all over the house they're mean they'll scratch you yeah they get you they'll bite you on the ankle you i know a girl that had a pet chicken inside her house i thought chickens were kind of mean the ones i knew yeah the ones i did but anyway, I just want yeah, to stress you got, it. But, but you got to because you know I do had a nephew one time, and we took him fishing, and the poor kids over there petting the fish. And I go to my brother. I said, "You got to get this kid a dog. <laughs> yeah. He's petting a fish. Yeah. Seriously." Woo. So yeah, I think all kids need a dog. Well, everybody goes through this. I mean, when you get married, they well, we're never doing this. We're never going there. They're never coming to our house. Do you realize? Everything you thought was never is going to happen about a hundred times in your lifetime. Because <laughs> God has a very strange sense of humor. And you'll make it. And you'll grow up. And you'll mature. And you'll learn how to serve other people. And, and smile a lot. And bury a lot of dead animals. And, well, let's get another pet. Let me bury that one. I'll let you play with it for half a day. And <laughs> give it a name. And then it's, I'm going to have to feed it and clothe it. And do everything with it. But you learn. But then, you know, the whole thing is, it was a whole lot of you say, no, we've already had, you know, we had 18 dogs. No, not another one. But Mike is really good at training dogs. Oh, no, he's, oh, he's no, real good. No, I'm yes, good at cleaning are. up messes is what I'm good at. Well, My that's part of My wife and kids were actually better at it. Than I, <laughs> I just yell. I talk to my dogs. I have conversations with them and yep. stuff. But, yeah, but I don't think there's any clear answer to that question except nope. tell him you want a cat instead, and when he really freaks out, then say, we'll settle for a dog, and then it won't be such a, if such, you such a hard thing. make the cat thing, tell him you'll get him a hamster. Because hamsters are rats, and they don't sleep at night. <laughs> so we had, a, we had a hamster in a cage in my son's room, and we had wooden floors. So at night, he'd get up, and he'd run that little wheel. Yeah. It's cute to watch it unless it's 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> What's that noise? That rat's awake, and it's running in its little a wheel. wheel. Yeah. Uh, well, my daughter has a cat, and she has trained that cat that she'll hold it a treat, and it'll give her a high five, and then she gives it the treat. And I'm it, like, it's still a cat. So, you know. Be careful. She loves that cat. <laughs> no. I'm sorry, but God, I God just, yeah, I, don't know. Well. I don't know what he was thinking. God's training. Whatever you do, it's part of the training program. 
Yes, it faith is. and patience. Faith and patience. <laughs> That's the truth. It will teach you that. Yeah, ask him for a the snake. The fruit of the spirit. A no, a snake. Be... No, 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 yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Just got to go with something. You have to go here yeah. and then settle for the <laughs> yeah. dog. That's true. That's, That's right. true. You could say, "Hey, you know what I want for my birthday? A new car." Okay, I'll settle for a watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. See, I like that. That works. So, Joe Edith says. Joe, I am dealing with grief. My husband went to be with the Lord February 1st, 2021. My heart is broken. I feel lost without him. We were married 45 and a half years and one day. I enjoy hear, hearing from you, Brother Joe. Well, everybody's gone through that to some degree, whether it's uh, somebody that died or somebody got divorced. You know, I died 45 years with my first wife and Got diagnosed, within three months she's dead, you know. So I never kissed another woman. I don't know anything else but that. And so I, I didn't know what depression was, but for six weeks I couldn't stop crying. I just cried every day. I mean, I'd be fine off, so I'd just start crying. My kids say, you okay? I just have to hold my hand up. Just give me a minute. So it took six weeks for me. Six weeks later, I woke up on a Saturday morning, and I heard God say to me, now whether you believe it or not, I'm telling you what I heard. I heard God say, son, shut up, get up, and get busy. And so it's like I realized She's gone. Crying won't bring her back. It's not going to do a thing. And so evidently my life's not through. I'm still here. She's through. She's gone to heaven. She's singing with the saints. You're walking pearly, uh, the streets and having songs and having a nice time, eating fruit off the tree. I don't know what she's doing. But she's not thinking about me. I'm still here. So evidently God's not through with me. So I need to start getting on in my life. Evidently God's not through with me. Evidently he's through with my wife, but not me. I still have stuff to do, so I need to get busy. And so I did. I started living. And, of course, it took one day at a time. And people said, would you, you ever miss him? Well, you know, I've been remarried for three years now to Angel. And so that's been almost five years since my wife left. And people, well, what would you do? Well, I grieved for a long time. And then one day I just got up and stopped. I got busy living. Then a year and a half later, I fell in love again. I got remarried. And uh, we have very open conversations. <laughs> Angel say, you ever think about Denise? And I say, what? You ever think about Denise? I said, no. Now, maybe it's a grace. Maybe it's some kind of God-given grace. I never think about my former wife. I don't compare. You know, the Bible says don't compare yourselves among yourselves. Uh, you know, angels doesn't look like my former wife. She doesn't think like her, act like her, look like her. And people say, well, you just missed your wife. Well, yeah, I missed her. I was married to her for 45 years, sucked lips off her face, dropped six kids. We had a great life. It wasn't perfect. It was great. But she went to heaven one day. And so Abraham lost Sarah. Sarah died one day. Abraham got remarried and had six more kids. And I, they said, you, you ever miss Sarah? I don't think he did. I got remarried. I got another woman. Man, we're dropping babies like rainwater to heaven. I'm not thinking about Sarah. I'm thinking about her. I made me a good-looking woman. I'm dropping babies. And so it's like it, it, life goes on. And so you got to watch this. You don't make, you don't make a, 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 a monument out of the dead. The dead died. Jesus, you see what she, she said about that? Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. I, I think that I, – I'm sorry to mean to no, interrupt, but I'm just saying I don't think God – I've never thought that God has the same view on on death and life Not that, that we do, because first of all, I I had just got back from a funeral from someone at a, a, a church back home, and uh, I all through the thing, I I guess it just never registered that much, but they kept saying so and so had a had a great sense of humor, so and so just had a way with people, so and so had this had that, and I'm sitting there the whole time going. They still do. Yep. There's no, I mean, and I thought to myself, ah, if I ever good. do, I've only done one funeral and I did it when I'll never I was on it. staff at church forget. with Angel. But yeah, Lord Jesus. <laughs> that was, that was, that was a experience. memory for yes. sure. <laughs> that was a crazy memory. But I only did one funeral in my entire life. If I ever do another one, I'm going to go through and key out every single word that makes that person seem past tense. They're not past tense. Nope. He is as alive as you are. Yep. It, I, I still think there's a lot of times people, when people die, they step. They literally step aside, look back, and see their body, and go. I, th I think I just died, because you don't ever lose consciousness. You don't ever no. lose. You, you're. I mean, you step. You're gonna live out. forever. Yeah. I mean, either here in heaven or in hell, you're gonna live forever somewhere. So when when you have that, see, we don't have that in us. We think of death as some kind of final thing, and yo, know, well, I know we'll see him in, in heaven someday, but you know what? We 
we don't have any more conscious, real conscious of that any more than we actually know what heaven's nope. like. Nope. We can't hardly picture it. We don't ment- we, we can am- mentally ascend to right. the fact that we're going to, to live for eternity. Yeah. But if you really sit down and start trying to think of eternity, just sit down someday and just go back and imagine God, the fact that he's, he had no beginning, he has no end. Go back <laughs> to, well, what did God set on before he made something to set on because he created everything so he didn't have a chair at some point yeah when did he fi- i mean you can't figure that out you can't figure out like i think i'm gonna make a few stars there was no beginning yeah i mean how long did he go before we ever created a universe so the thing is this we can't wrap our head around certain things but one of the things is death and i believe that when that person that person passed away if they know god they went right into the presence of yes, god yes they did they're just as alive as they ever were there's no had or they used to or you know there's none of that funerals for the people left behind yeah, not for the one yeah. who died yeah well so. and and i think having been divorced you've lost a spouse i lost my father uh uh it, the thing is is something like that event is so huge in your life right and a lot of times you stop living when that happens. Right. Yeah. We and, it, do. and it marks us. Like for years, I felt like divorce. That, that suddenly became my title. You're branded. That, yes, exactly. Right. I was branded. And then widow. You can, you, you know, you can say the same thing. And single mother. And, and then. There are no married couples getting together with you anymore. Yeah. And then you. You didn't become, invite anything hardly anymore. Well, that's the truth. And you can, that can become your filter. And then you withdraw. And see, the problem is, is the devil doesn't mind if you withdraw. Oh. He doesn't mind if you're focusing and making a idol out of someone Isolate. that's in Isolate. heaven. Right, he doesn't exactly. mind if you're, you know, you're just, you're, you're scrambling and busy. He minds if you're effective. Yeah. Right. And, and so what I would suggest to you is what the Jewish people do is they grieve for 30 days. Yep, one and month. after 30 days, it's like, okay, get back to living. Yep. Like, we're giving you a season, but it's not going to, without a, an end spot. Right. And God I set mean, that up for the saints. You got to do that with Moses. I'll give you 30 days to cry over Moses. Day 31, we got stuff to do. Get up, clean yourself up, and let's get moving. Yeah, I understand that you're human. I understand that, that there's a grieving process. And God understands And, and it's not, it's, it may not end in 30 days, but it means you got to get back to living again. Right, exactly. And, and it's the same thing. And I have to tell you that at, when I felt branded... Like that was my new title, divorce, scandal, whatever, you know, that, that, that I shrunk back and I withdrew. Right. I withdrew from the church. I withdrew from my, my church community and I just really isolated myself and I became extremely vulnerable. So in that sense, I would really encourage you to overcome what you're feeling and don't let that be your guide push past that and let eternity be become real to you yes i mean and, and meditate on that meditate on what god says about yeah, it I know. And we force do not yourself die to go out force yourself to um to get with other believers don't feel uncomfortable make everybody else feel uncomfortable I just st- show up someplace i still think that the, the christian the whole i think christians in general ought to get over the per- the thing of he died yeah. I, I don't know i mean we we ran with that like n- no yeah. i mean I mean, Jesus did admit it. He goes, you know, uh, he's talking about uh, Lazarus, you know, and he finally had to get, you know, the the he had to f- finally get real with the disciples and say, okay, he he's actually dead, you yeah. know. So Jesus said, <laughs> yeah, Jesus used the word die, dead. <gasps> yes, he passed away, but he's not dead, you know. So. He's living. Yes, he's he, absolutely living. So we're the ones that have to deal with it because they're not. And they're probably with up it. there going. Get Look, over it. We're fine. <laughs> yeah. Go get, on. Get on with your life, hoss. Get on. But but it is a trap that the enemy tries to get yeah. you in. Yeah. And whether it is divorce, whether it's the loss of a loved one, whether it's the loss of a child, yeah. uh, what a trauma, that's what it's meant for, to stop you from living. Yeah, right. And it's the tool of the enemy. So I would that's just good. encourage you, surround yourself with the most positive people that you can absolutely invite people over to dinner invite people out yeah force yourself to to remain social because withdrawing is a trap from the enemy it's true so that is it for today but i did want to remind you joe has fantastic products available that will just encourage you wherever you are uh we've got we've got tape series how to how to resolve conflict good blended family single parents uh then we've got books four kinds of kids and 
it's, it's, it's just loaded. You can check out our blog. Uh, you can listen to the podcast at joemcgee.com. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And listen, guys, continue to pray for us. Uh, we need your prayers. And uh, we really covet them and, and your partnership. Uh, we just need you to prayers pray for us. Prayers and partnership make this possible. Yes. There is nothing happening here today unless we have prayers and partners. Yep. All right, guys. Thank you. And we will love you. see you next Monday. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. He's got a great future for you and your family. And we're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.